three. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's now time for the reality zone of the unfiltered news. The unfiltered news is political correctness that's not spoken here, compiled by G. Edward Griffin and his cast. Cassandra Anderson, photo and humor by Scout is uh, Joanne Glover, and proofreader is Tom Parker. For this week, June 21st through June 27th, click on headlines to see four articles. If no sources are missing, click on Koch. Uh, you got the video, audio, star, and asterisk, meaning amazing event or phenomena. And star indicates articles worth printing and keeping. Okay, let's get on to the picture comic strip for this week, which is very truthful. Uh, let me get there. It says, Harmful if swallowed. Government approved news mainstream media. Newscorps.com. Class Commerce. Copyright by Class Commerce. Or Grass. Grass Commerce. Anywho. Don't swallow the news media medicine. It will confuse you and delude you. The mainstream media. Uh, between Fox and CNN and the rest of them. It's just a, a nightmarish thing happening. Uh, <clears throat> let me see. Let's get on to the first article for this week. And I'll have a uh, link to all this as usual down at the bottom of the video where you can go here and actually get on this page read the article or the headline and then tap in and read the article the link thereof okay let's start out Obama is requesting 500 million to train and equip vetted Syrian rebels this is a continuation of a long-standing effort to oust Syrian President Assad. The $500 million in aid is part of a proposed $1.5 billion, badly misnamed, regional stabilization initiative to destabilize Syria and bolster its neighbors, Jordan, Lebanon, Turkey, and Iraq. New Age, posted uh, June 27th. Oh yeah, they were just going out there and they're... they're they keep changing sides. One week the the rebels, the mercenaries are bad guys, and next week they're good guys, and they just keep going back and forth. And uh, well, I can't believe anything they're saying. It's it's cuckoo, isn't it? Yes, it is. Very cuckoo. And the next is a, a star, something to keep for future reference. Fifty scientists who once worked for the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the agency that created the myth of man-made global warming, have broken ranks and now condemn the IPCC's junk science. And it is junk science. Here is the long list with forceful statements from each of them that sets the record straight. Climate Realist, June 26th. And it's, and it's true. These people are out there saying that it's global warming. But they didn't tell you that uh, Noah and the rest of them have been shutting down the urban uh, temperature readers just for the ones in the city, which in the city it's always warmer. Why? Buildings, air conditioning units, all this stuff is creating heat. And so they can tell you that, hey, look, it's warm. Look how warm it is. I'm sitting out here right now, and it's 76 degrees. But I bet in, in uh, Columbus, Ohio, it's uh, oh, probably still in the 80s in downtown Columbus. Yeah. Well, just, just think of it. That's what they've been doing. They've been trying to hoodwink you into believing in this global warming so they can tax you for it and say carbon tax you need to pay more money to the government it needs the money so it can spend it and waste it on furious things and not do the infrastructure and everything else that we need done in this country oh yeah or oh, bringing up illegals and putting them in in 
old abandoned bases and now they're saying they're going to take the abandoned Walmarts where they're not really abandoned they just went out of business and the buildings are there and they're going to start sticking all these 14 to 17 year old future army for the Democrats in them and train them to attack Americans people who were born here yes that's what they're up to if you don't know it you haven't been doing your research I suggest also going to uh, www.whatreallyhappened.com and uh, find out for yourself with the articles there there may be articles in here that will cover the same thing I just haven't got to them yet okay Germany is terminating its contract with Verizon over fears that the company is cooperating with the NSA to spy on German citizens AP News June 26 in Massachusetts a regional SWAT team in the Northeastern Massachusetts Law Enforcement Council is refusing to comply with a public record request claiming that it is a private entity not subject to public records laws. If this is true, the existence of Nimlik is illegal because it has been purchasing military equipment with government grants and public funds. Story leak, June 26. That's right. The SWAT teams are private organizations now, private police forces. Gestapoism is coming to America in full force. Don't you see it? Anyways, next. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Don't be afraid. Get mad and demand answers. Anyways, New York's Attorney General Eric uh, Schneiderman filed civil fraud charges against uh, Barclays Investment Bank. The charges allege that Barclays dumped or duped investors into using their dark pool exchange that supposedly kept buy and sell orders secret from large markets. This isn't sold as means of protecting investors from predatory high frequency traders. However, the bank actually encouraged predatory high frequency traders to take advantage of the investors they had lured into the pool. Barclays has a dark history of manipulating the LIBOR and gold markets. Telegraph, June 26. And they have gold's been kept down, been forcibly kept down. We think Germany is demanding their gold back in all these other countries because they've been using that money, that gold they had up there in New York City and dumping it in the market to keep the gold prices suppressed so you won't go out and buy that. No, no, you want that paper. That stuff it's going to become worthless and it will only be worth wallpaper. Remember, gold and silver have industrial use for electronics and everything. That piece of paper has no use at all except for wallpaper and that's about what it says it backs you know even though it's supposedly oil and they're losing that power too okay what's going on is this it's this one lie after another they've been lying so long the government can't come up with anything truthful to say because all I can come up with is, is lying scams and they just keep doing it and I and, and other governments are now doing it and across the world and and it's all for the central banksters the ones that own the big banks not the small ones not your local bank in your county or something and your credit unions oh no those are okay but these big banks you know like Citibank and uh, and what's in your wallet bank in because <laughs> we want it in Oz yeah, those are the banksters you gotta worry about. Okay, video. Some hospitals are purchasing data collection or data collected on patients from data brokers. The data comes from credit card transactions, supermarket loyalty cards, and public records. Hospitals use the data to guess if you drink, smoke, or eat junk food, and then predict the likelihood that you will get sick. The information is passed to doctors who may intervene, supposedly for your own good, but less prize-worthy uses uses also are possible. Are are praise-worthy? Praise-worthy? Yeah. Okay. Fox News, uh, June 26. Okay. Next, U.S. The Senate proposed to spend an additional 50 billion 
over and above its current budget to fix the problems at the Department of Veterans Affairs. This is a disgusting example of how, no matter how badly a government operation fails or how much corruption creeps into it, we can be sure that politicians will claim that the primary problem is that it doesn't have enough money. So let's throw more money on it and make more people rich and not do the services that the money's meant to, to do. They seldom fire the corrupt managers or trim the fat. The VA's budget more than doubled from $61 billion in 2001 to now $125 billion in 2012, and now it will get a big pay raise as a reward for failure. We should not allow failure to be, to be given more money or be, be uh, you know, uh, 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 geez, this is just so upsetting. It really is. Uh, it says, uh, and now it will get a big pay raise as a reward for failure. Paying people for failure. PPJ, June 25th. How, how insane is that? I mean, they're being rewarded. That's the word I was trying to come up with, but it was just reading that just upset me. Zone Rogers, like, what? 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 Really? <laughs> Okay, video. U.S. Supreme Court unanimously ruled that police officers may not search a suspect's phone without a warrant unless there is an emergency. The ruling will limit fishing expeditions by police, and that's what it is. It's like the police coming up to you in New York and going, Empty your pockets out. I think you've got drugs on you. And uh, that's ba basically what they're trying to do with the phones, in a way. And it's the same type of thing. Empty your pocket and see what you got. <laughs> the justices said that searching a suspect's phone is different than searching a wallet or a coat, which don't require a warrant, because of the great volume of information stored on modern phones, CBS, June 25th. Madness can't explain it. Criminals. We, we have criminals and more criminals. When the big government does criminal activity, it trickles down to the smaller governments and states and stuff and they all think they can get away with it because the big government is all because the big government isn't following the constitution doesn't mean the states don't have to follow the constitution and vice versa Urgh. okay u.s district court judge ann brown ruled that the government's secret fly, secret no-fly list violates the constitution that the procedure to clear one's name off the list denies due process the ruling requires the government to notify people that they are on a no-fly list and tell them why the justice department will likely appeal this decision collapse june 25th and there's a reason for that if they if it comes out we'll know that they've been lying about everything because that's a violation of your rights of the constitutional rights and they don't want you to know that because it, it, it's a domino effect to them and I think already people are starting to wake up to this I already do I think everybody's starting to turn off the mainstream media Fox CNN MSNBC NBC, ABC, CBS, all of them. They're just turning off the news on the national news because these people are reading off a script because you can almost go from news channel to news channel and they almost word to word say the same thing. So they're getting handed papers that, you know, news newspaper or articles or whatever, uh, their scripts, and they're reading off of them. Okay, video. New IRS scandals are erupting, and IRS has agreed to pay $50,000 in taxpayer money for inadequately leaking confidential financial documents of a conservative group. Now, see, that should come out of their pockets, not the people's pockets. But no, it's going to come out of the taxpayer's pockets because they're that corrupt that they're not taking, they're not, they're not, you know, facing up to their crimes. I mean, geez. Meanwhile, Tax Chief John Koskin, uh, Koskin uh, claimed that the IRS did not break any laws. Finally, documents sh show that Lois Lanier uh, targeted Senator Chuck 
Grassley for an audit by the IRS. The saga continues. Fox News, June 25th. And, you know, Fox is coming out with stuff like this because they have to save their face. They're looking at CNN and MSNBC, whose ratings have dropped <laughs> greatly over the last two years or so because they're, they're toting the government's um, propaganda. And so they're trying to save a little face, though they'll turn around in another article later on and, and say something just the opposite, but they'll think that you forgot about the first article. So, you, you know, the first news story, uh, don't worry about the second one. I mean, this is the type of things that they're believing in, and people are not that stupid anymore. They're starting to go, wait a second, I heard last week it said this. Now they're saying that. What the hell is going on, you know? <laughs> Obama's drone memo that explains the legal basis for killing Americans overseas without a trial was finally made public but was heavily redacted. The footnotes of the memo will make reference to another memo, and that suggests there is a body of secret rules for murdering Americans that the executive branch has treated as binding law but is being withheld from the public. Guardian, June 24th. Now, how can they hold this from the public? If they're going to come out and say, we're going to kill Americans, and then not tell you why and give you the reasons why they're doing all this stuff in detail... I mean, there's something wrong here. I mean, there's, there's, it's just an open, an open assassination list of anyone that doesn't agree with the tout the government's word and the government's motive. I mean, it's all this stuff going on overseas that's getting they're in trouble right now with that, and they're trying to do anything and everything they can to to save face, and they can't because of criminals. When you're criminal and you're in Washington District of Criminals, you're not going to be able to do that. I mean, everybody knows what D.C. means. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean District of Columbia. It means District of Criminals, and that's where all the criminals are, second to Chicago. Anyways, video U.S. A whistleblower from the Veterans Administration facility in Phoenix, Arizona, says that records were manipulated to hide the deaths of veterans who were waiting for medical care. The Office of Special Counsel, a group of government prosecutors, wrote a scanting report about the VA's failure to take complaints seriously. The report details the poor and even abusive care that veterans received. In one case, a vet was in a mental facility for eight years without ever seeing a psychiatrist. They just put him away without ever doing anything. June 24th from CNN. See, CNN also throws these little tidbits out there to try to save face. But you you just watch the news programs and you can see all the lies and disinformation out there that they're doing. I mean, they, they sometimes throw you a bone, basically. And, uh, and that's what they've been doing to American people for, oh, a few years now. I think 25 years. Yeah, they've been throwing you bones. U.S., but now they've been doing it so often that they're they can't keep up with the keep up with the appearances that they have, so they're they're losing viewerships, and they can't save themselves. U.S. alternative news is the way to go. This is part of it. U.S. Senator Tom Coburn published an explosive report on the Veterans Administration. This is a continuation of this problem. It cites examples of criminal activity by the VA employees that include murder, rape, theft of veterans, belongings, and drug dealing. Over a thousand veterans have died as a result of poor management, and almost one billion dollars has been paid out in malpractice settlements over ten years. S Senator Coburn, June 24th. There you go. Even some of the ones, some of the white hats in District of Criminal are coming out and saying, look, this is what's going on. A new study shows that pregnant women living within a mile of farmland, golf courses, or parks that are treated with chemical pesticides have a higher chance of giving birth to autistic children. This is... This was not a large study with extensive controls. The potential of other causes was not studied, so the finding cannot be considered as conclusive. However, 
We are publishing it because it reinforces other study, studies linking autism to neurotoxic chemicals in vaccines and pesticides, and we feel that our readers should be aware of, larger, of the larger picture. CBS News, June 23rd. Another one should throwing a bone to you. And, uh, you know, these mainstream medias will throw a bone, but if you watch the majority of it, it's all supporting everything that's going on in the war zones overseas that are not real. If you read actually some of the overseas papers, like in Britain and some of the other countries, Russia even, RT, you'll find a different story than what they're touting out there on the uh, mainstream media in America. Uh, video, Washington State. The Hanford site that houses waste from U.S. nuclear weapons manufacturing continues to leak radiation and vapors from more than 2,000 toxic chemicals and has made 37 employees sick since March. Unfortunately, this is not a new development at Hanford. This report shows how government and corporate officials altered documents and lied to employees about the dangers of working there. King 5 News, June 23rd. And that's that's part of the problem of all these cancers and everything coming up. It's all this nuclear, nuclear this, nuclear that. We need to go to alternative energy other than nuclear. Anything. I mean, Fukushima should have been the red flag that everyone should have seen. But no, they're talking about building more nuclear facilities on earthquake zones and stuff. And that's like, okay, when the power grid goes down from some accident or from a solar flare and it takes out 200 nuclear reactors at one time and they can't back them up because everything fused and uh, they go critical, I guess we'll wake up then. I guess that's when you'll wake up. And that's not an if, but when. Okay, video. Pro-war politicians, including Obama, Dianne Feinstein, and Lindsey Graham, and Dick Cheney, are using fear to scare people into supporting more war. They're war hawks. They're armchair warriors that won't send their own children off to the war, but they will sit there and say, you must send your children off to the war to fight for our money and our oil and everything that we're conquering while we're over there. And Okay, they are claiming that unless we attack first, nuclear bombs may be used against America, just like on 9-11. Just like on 9-11, nuclear weapons were used. Hmm. Really? That's, is that a Freudian slip? Infowars. <laughs> June 23rd. What is this? Ah. Ron Paul offers an alternative to the Common Core teaching uh, curriculum. It is a homeschool curriculum that is free for children in grades K-5 to almost free above that. It prepares students for college, but those who are not interested in college can learn how to start their own business. RPI, June 22nd. At least they'll have an education to support themselves and not this core garbage where the mathematics is so screwed up in that program where they're doing hash lines 20 times to figure out a problem. I don't know where they came up with that idea. Is that's better than doing the regular uh, straight division and straight uh, multiplication, adding and subtraction. Because basically you can use adding and subtraction to do division and multiplication. You just break things down and you do it in your head. There are courses out there 15, 20 years ago on TV and I bought the courses and read through them and they work. They actually work. The memory course worked. The mathematical course worked. It was just the idea of using adding and subtraction to do multiplication and division. And you can use that. It's out there. Just look it up. I mean, it's simple, simple stuff that makes it a lot easier that you can do math in your head. You don't even have to write, do these long mathematical things on there unless you're doing you know scientific formulas where you're using symbols that represent certain things then that has to be done that way it has to be done with the symbols and you have to draw it out until you can get to the 
conclusion of the formula. But as far as just doing regular adding, subtracting, multiplying, division, that can all be done in your head. It's just the you no know, algebra and calculus that has to be written down and then scientific formulas which have to be symbolized because they're 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 thoughts. They're not tangible items. So they are they're kind of written down as symbols and then you go from there and you come to a conclusion by dedu by deduction. Anywho, Oregon. The Department of Agriculture was called to investigate massive bee die-offs after a tree maintenance company sprayed a cluster of trees with a a neuronicotinoid pesticide. This class of pesticide has called bee die caused bee die-offs across the country. There is little doubt that it is the cause in this case. Honeybee die-off is a serious problem because bees pollinate one-third of food grown in America. Register Guard, June 21st. And it does. If the bees go, as Einstein says, soon the human race goes. So remember that. The bees are very important. If as we know, honeybees, they're very important. Bumblebees are very important. They all go out and pollinate stuff. Flowers and crops and, I mean, they go, we go. Because otherwise you'll be out there by hand pollinating every plant in a, a 20 hectare field and you'll be wondering why you're out there doing that. Okay, anyways. <laughs> Uh, ISIS, or is it ISLAS, or whatever name they're coming up with it. The Islamic State of Iraq and Syria is a terrorist organization that has taken on many attributes of a commercial enterprise in the corporation. Instead of focusing on revenue, its 410-page annual report documents the number of assassination, suicide missions, checkpoints, and cities it occupies. Its goal is to build a Sunni state with the benefit of the corporate structure. ISIS looted $400 million from an Iraqi bank and is now the richest terrorist organization outside of the governments. Zero Hedge, June 21st. And they're all just... A lot of them are just I don't know. It goes between the paid mercenaries and and the and the people who are just fed up having the U.S. putting in puppet governments. And it's just who knows what's really going on between the two, because it's I mean the ones that are in Syria that were the rebels, they were actually mercenaries. They were from other countries, and that's all came out. It's all crumbling on them. And they're trying to get us into a war, so we'll forget about that. Anyways, Florida local law enforcement agencies are using cell phone tracking devices known as stingrays, borrowed from the U.S. Marshal Service. This practice allows police to conceal the use of stingrays in court documents so defendants cannot use a illegal search defense. ACLU uh, posted June 21st. Okay, see this uh, video of something of extraordinary. It's amazing what a little care and kindness can do to an abandoned dog that has been, looks like he's been burnt. But that's not the point. Uh, I haven't had a chance to look at the video yet. I've been too busy reading articles and headlines and then reading the articles if they're of interest. Anyways, uh, analysis for this week, you know, reports and commentaries that look beyond the news to identify historical facts and trends that help to place the news into perspective. Michigan. The Detroit Water and Sewage Department says that 21% of its customers were not paying their bills prior to sending shutoff notices. Past due accounts totaled more than $90 million, but after water service was actually shut off, 60% of those customers paid their bills within 24 hours. However, the UN has taken an interest in this issue and says that water should never be cut off because it is a human right. Write us at the unfiltered form below and share your opinion. Detroit Free Press, June 26th. And, yeah, water is a right, food is a right. 
and these corporations are buying everything up. I mean, water is a right, but yet Nest, Nesty, who's taking water out of the Great Lakes and sending it to China, is saying that water is a commodity and not a right, and you must buy the water from them. Alright, I'm going to stop drinking Nesty iced tea and Nesty uh, hot chocolate and all the rest of it. I'm boycotting them. That's just insanity. When somebody thinks they have that much power to take away your rights to your free, your, your actually God-given right to have these things as a humane thing, they are the enemy. Okay, video is a US-EU merger plan. This analysis by Gary... Francini explains how international treaties now being considered were accomplished exactly that. Here's what you need to know about the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TPP Treaty, and the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, TTIP. Lobbyists are trying to get state and local officials on board with these sovereignty stealing plans and are holding the negotiations in secret, not public. So they're just going to come up with this stuff and say one day, you don't have this right, you don't have that right, because we say so. And we got these bills, see, these, these pieces of paper that say so. Yeah, and uh, you didn't come to me and ask for my permission? I think not. Next News Network, June 25th. They can't do that. These These... Foreign entities invading our country are the enemy, and we should invade them back by any sanction or whatever we can do against these corporations, these world corporations that are doing this stuff. Because that's basically what the Trans-Pacific Partnership is and the uh, Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership is. It's a corporation. It's not a organization. It's not a governmental function. It's just money junkies one percenters out to get everything they can they're, they're, they're raping the planet and apparently we're not jumping up and saying no to them fast enough to stop them and they're just going to go away and, and make up all this paperwork and come out and say this is the law today if you don't wear brown t-shirts you will be executed because this is the law of the day I mean, that's what they used to do. There's kings that used to do that type of stuff. And these people think they're kings or something. Think they're above God and the universe. And they're not. <laughs> they're just greedy little evil bastards that need to be uh, brought to justice. Anyways. Video. Benin. West Africa. A square mile organic farm has created a successful microeconomy that is modeled for the rest of Africa. The farm trains students in organic practices they can take home to their own villages. The model is spreading to Libya, Nigeria, and Sierra Leone. AFP, June 24th. It almost sounds like a Bonte or Bantu or whatever it is, the guy in South Africa trying to start up a thing where you use your... You teach somebody to grow crops and then they go and teach others and then everyone grows their own crop and everybody is well fed, nobody starves. I mean, it's just, uh, I don't know why that hasn't caught on bigger in the news, but the news is working for, you know, except for the alternative news. Uh, F. William Ingodell, uh, Ingodell author of Myths, Lies, and Oil Wars, says that the rise of ISIS, a terrorist organization, has all the earmarks of being a covert CIA Pentagon and NATO operation. The goal, according to Ingdahl, I can't really pronounce his last name, Ingdahl, Ingdahl, is to destabilize Syria and prevent Iraq from increasing oil production. Keep in mind that the reason Western oil companies want to control the oil in the Middle East is not to get more oil, but to cut back production to justify higher prices. The evidence Ingadel uh, offers to support his analysis is impressive, such as the fact that ISIS fighters have been trained and funded by the U.S. and that some of them even have valid U.S. passports. Right here today, June 24th, there are the mercenaries, ISIS. The new mercenaries. Hmm. Watch them run when they're overtaken. 
because they can't pay, can't spend their mercenary paychecks if they get killed. Anyways, uh, video. Retired Philadelphia police captain Ray Lewis joined the Occupy movement in New York after police pepper sprayed protesters. Lewis says that the militarization of America's local police departments with the use of equipment from U.S. wars in the Middle East is extremely dangerous. Innocent people will be killed by high caliber weapons with high ricochet velocity and bullets that can penetrate doors, cinder block, and car doors. He says that the sociopaths are drawn into the police hierarchy to gain power and control over others, control freaks, as they call them, and the corporations will make billions in profits in maintaining the use used military equipment which has created a police industrial complex. Not only do we have a military industrial complex, we now have a police industrial complex. Scary, huh? Should be. Should be terrified of that. And be mad as hell and not take it anymore. RT, June 23rd. Here's a great photo. Which it is. It's nice. I like that. Be nice for a wall mirror in an office in the background of your wall behind your desk. It'd just be cool. And uh, this is the humor for this week. Emails from Arab student to his dad. Uh, and uh oh, running right into a wave. Ow. <laughs> the unfiltered form. Huge kudo for creature. The creature from Jekyll Island, that is tells everything. You should know why we're in the state we're in today. Annotations of the Constitution, uh, pea pods, the eggs, all these stories you can see, and the Reality Zone classifieds for income, health, and other things. Money and banking and all that, if you want to. Check out his books. Make sure you get the, the Federal Reserve, a discourse by G. Edward Griffin the man who brings you these weekly news <laughs> headlines news lines uh, cancer the forbidden cures it's there is cures there's no treatment cures don't go for the radiation and the chemo those are the two evils there's a bunch of other things that don't kill you <laughs> or possibly kill you uh, not mess you up worse and I mean these natural cures will actually not harm you uh, the Creature from Jekyll Island, the book that started it all. It's a fifth, uh, a fifth edition, and uh, he's added on to it. The book is even thicker than it was when it first came out, and it was pretty thick then. The second Dallas, uh, dead wrong about children being put on uh, psychotic drugs, and how it turns them into, uh, you know, uh, old different places where they had the shootings, uh, should I say where they were uh, why are they sp what the world why in the world are they spraying more calls it's climate control state of mind controlling your psychology through media and and this propaganda okay well that's it that's the news that you may have missed for this week for June 21st to 27th of uh, 2014th. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and uh, a great next week. Be informed. Keep informed. Be awake. Do your studies. Read more and more alternative headlines and then do your research on them to make sure they're correct. And uh, well, what else can I say? Not much. Except uh, be good. Or be good at it, and good day, night and morning.